here in our Mantis server, we can see I've placed our Excel workbook for analysis into my appropriate connection directory. If I click on this and open it up, we can see that I have two tabs, both of which are sourcing their data from an MS SQL database. The first tab includes table level view, and my second tab includes some uh, pivot table uh, that's sourcing its information from uh, the DWH rep client sheet. So with all this looking good, we can jump back now to the Manta server and make sure everything is set up for analysis, and then go ahead and scan this. Today, we'll be walking through the process of setting up and analyzing metadata housed in Excel files. Manta is capable of handling multiple sheets in a series of Excel workbooks with a single connection. Manta can process XLSM and XLSX workbook files, including commonly adopted Excel conventions, such as graphs and pivot tables. All the generated objects are then connected to any relevant objects in the data pipeline, such as database elements upstream or downstream. We'll begin the demonstration here in the admin UI by first creating the connection for our Excel resource. To create the connection, we simply click on the Add Connection button, then search for our desired resource. For today, we're going to pick Excel. We'll be prompted with a form to fill out with the required details. So for today, I'm going to use a connection name of Excel underscore demo, and the dictionary ID will set up as Excel underscore demo as well. Then I'll click Save. Menta will then go ahead behind the scenes and create this connection for us. We can now see in our reporting and BI section on the left-hand side, we have an Excel resource type. And inside there, we have the newly defined connection. The next step is to place the Excel workbook into the appropriate location on the Manta server. Taking a quick look at the Manta folder structure, we can see that I created a new directory in the MantaFlow CLI input folder, and I titled it Excel. This folder will house all the contents of the Excel connections that we create. Inside the folder, we'll want to add another folder and name it the same value as what we entered our connection ID for. In this case, I, I created a connection with the Excel underscore demo value, which we see here. Once inside the Excel demo folder, we'll want to place all the different Excel workbooks we want to include in our scan. For this example, I'm just going to place one and name it manta underscore demo dot XLSX. Once the previous steps have been successfully completed, we can jump back into the manta admin UI and trigger the scan. Here, back in the Process Manager tab of the Manta Admin UI, I have a process that I previously created named MSSQL underscore Excel underscore analysis. This process will extract the metadata from my configured MSSQL resource and analyze it along with the newly added Excel workbook. To trigger this process, I'll click on the Execute Workflow button in my bottom left-hand corner and choose the workflow from my custom workflows list. Once I click on the OK button, we'll see the workflow added to my workflow queue in my process manager tab. So I'm going to click on the OK button here, and my process gets added to my workflow queue along with its status. We can see now we're in the running status, so we're going to go ahead and let this extract all the metadata and analyze everything to produce the data lineage for us. Okay, now we can see that our process manager has finished successfully analyzing and extracting our MS SQL and Excel resources. So we'll jump into the data flow viewer and see how those results came out. Here in my Manta flow viewer, I can see I have a repository tree view, which is showing my Excel resource and my MS SQL resource. If I expand out my Excel folder, I can see a little bit more details around what I scanned. Here's my Manta underscore demo Excel workbook. Inside of here, I have a few different sheets. I have my sheet that I connected to my rep client database table, and I have another sheet that I created a, a pivot table around. Let's go ahead and grab the entire workbook. 
in our selected elements. And let's visualize this uh, data lineage for this asset at a medium level of detail. All my visualization parameters are set here at the bottom, and I'm just going to go ahead and click Visualize. Once I click on the Visualize button, we'll see a diagram produced that represents the data lineage for our Excel workbook. By panning to the right-hand side, we can see how data is flowing all the way into my pivot table uh, worksheet over here on the far right-hand side, as well as my DWH rep client table that we created. By expanding some of these different boxes here, we can see all the way down to the column level. By panning to the left-hand side, we can follow the lineage line all the way back to their source of origin. Now what's pretty interesting about this is my Excel workbook ends right here, as denoted by this teal box that it's nested with inside of, and my MS SQL resource starts right here. So Manta was able to piece the relationships together from MS SQL to my Excel workbook based only on the metadata that it analyzed from the extraction and the provided uh, Excel workbook that we placed onto the Manta server earlier. Other points of interest in here are if I click on any one of these fields, we can now see the upstream and downstream movements from my chosen asset as denoted by the blue and red coloring themes being applied. The red coloring theme is denoting the downstream movement from my chosen asset, and the blue color theme is denoting the upstream movements. couple other topics that are worth noting here is Manta was able to detect a few other key details from our rep client table inside of MS SQL, including what was the primary key and foreign key for the table, as denoted here by our active tags. For more information around active tags or any other uh, details that we've gone over in today's demonstration, feel, feel free to visit us at getmanta.com.